from the riot at the dog park studios, it's live with Johnny. And now, hey, here's Johnny. Hey, good evening, everybody. We are at the Bridge Cigar Shop. <coughs> Excuse me. With our with our guys here, introduce yourselves, gentlemen. Tell them who you are. I'm Chuck. That's Paul. I talk for Paul. Paul I was just gonna say, he's just like, yeah, thank you. I am who I am. Uh, so we're here tonight. Um, if you guys remember earlier, I think it was earlier this year. My memory uh, yeah. escapes me. We had you guys on via Zoom, and we fell in love with the Bridge Cigar Shop. So um, we decided, why not get down here for the holidays and um, say thank you guys to your first appearance. Before we get started, I want to bring something up before we get into all the mumbo jumbo. Um, when we first interviewed you guys, I heard nothing but the greatest things about you guys and what great guys you were, and you're both former police officers. Um, we had the tragedy in Bristol, and one of the coolest things, unfortunately, that you have to see come out of that was you guys reserving a table and two cigars for the, those two gentlemen who lost their lives. And um, I thought that was a class act, I, and I, it really like uh, hit me right here. I have a twin brother who's in the, uh, who's a, uh, uh, in the, the policeman or whatever you want to call it. And uh, I thought that was a class act, so I thought we should start the show. Cheers, those two gentlemen and, uh, and everybody else who wears the badge and wish them all safety and get home to their family. So cheers to them. Cheers. How are we, gentlemen? Good. Doing good. This is my second time in the, sh- in, in the, in the lounge. This, and um, before we leave, I'm going to take a bunch of pictures, maybe even a video, and show everybody. But this is a first class lounge. First of all, we got Golden Tea over there. If anybody knows anything about ni- late 1990s bar scene, Golden Tea was the way to go. Can people see the cigar or no? They can see the cigar. Look at me, Ma, smoking. Told me not to. Here I am. Big boy. Uh, you should have seen him try to light it. It was the funniest oh, thing. I, I wish that. we had that on camera. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had assistance. four dudes tell me to put it in my mouth. So uh, He was sucking real hard on that, too. <laughs> Gas money's gas money, sir. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucked up. Uh, you got the beautiful bar over there. Pictures you can see behind us. One of the great Tony Sopranos. I think uh, we all agreed that he's our favorite cigar smoker. The last time we smoked. Yeah. Or the last time we spoke. <laughs> I don't know what it is. What am I smoking here? Why is it so delicious? It's a uh, triple macchiato nub cigar. So it's, it's got a little chocolatey smell to it. Flavored taste. It's absolutely it's like smoking Wonderful. dessert. And it's, and it's perfect for me because I'm not a smoker. Right. And I don't want, you know, I, there's a couple of gentlemen here smoking cigars and they're, they're men because they're smoking the big boys and, the, you know. But this is perfect for me because it tastes good and it's going to be quick. And, you know, unfortunately, short, stubby, and quick is, uh, <laughs> it's where I'm at these days. I'm talking about my life. Hey, yeah. <laughs> That's literally chapter three of my biography. <laughs> um, as you know, it is Monday night. We usually have JoJo on for Monday night Mojo uh, picks, but unfortunately, uh, JoJo couldn't be with us tonight. Uh, he's home, and uh, we can't dial in because we are remote. So he wanted me to give his pick tonight. You're a Saints fan, yes, sir. You are Patriots fan. Yeah. Fucking give it up. You when you got into business, you were like, I'm going to get into business with the Patriots. Well, guy? that's why we don't hang any sports shit on there because I don't want him putting the Patriots or the Redskins up. We don't want too many, winter, winter, I'm sorry, we don't want many winter pictures yeah. up in here. I'm a Yankee oh, fan. It's an overwhelming amount of rings. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's right, but still. I think we could all agree, fuck the Patriots. Um, more importantly, fuck Tom Brady. Uh, and not in the sense that you'd like to, Kirk. Uh, but JoJo, uh, the Commanders versus the Eagles tonight. The game is in Philly, I believe. And the Commanders are getting 11 and a half. Who are the Commanders? They... <laughs> Is that a football team? I make the joke all the time that, you know, when you're doing a video game, you got to make up your own fake team. Yeah. That's You could pick from the commanders. <laughs> it is literally the stupidest fucking name ever, ever, ever. And um, But I prefer to call them, I, I thought they would have hit a home run if they kept it the Washington football team. Because, number one, I thought that was cool. Nobody else has that. And number two, why not just the skins? Why yeah. not just yeah. about the hogs? Anything. That, anything's better. Just the hogs would be offended. It's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not my hog. I mean, I don't get it. Just, it's just, yeah, it's ridiculous. I wish somebody would buy it and change it back to the Redskins. I mean, I just read an article, funny you should say that, yeah. uh, that they were saying that the guy has to sell, not going to end up having to sell the team. 
because he's like a serial sex assault or some shit. Um, I just don't like the guy, so we're going to badmouth him. Because well, he is getting sued by the city or... Yeah, no? he treats his cheerleaders and women yeah, like yeah. trash, so... Yeah. Well, he's got a politically correct name, so that's all that matters. Well, right? he thought that was going to make his life. He's going, I know what I'll do. I'll get I'll give rid of the Redskins' name and everybody will love me again. Nah, dude, you still can't be a dick. Um, right. So I think somebody's going to buy it, and I think 100% they should change it back to either Redskins, the Skins, the Hogs, uh, or the football team, which I thought was a cool name because nobody else has that name. But JoJo's pick tonight, There's the Commanders are getting 11 and a half points against the undefeated Eagles. JoJo is taking the Commanders and the points. So, and to know jo- JoJo's a Commanders fan. so It's a bold move. It is a bold move. It's a hard pick. He's picking with his heart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not a good pick. You're a Patriots guy. All you do is fucking pick with your heart. But anyway, that's Mojo JoJo's Monday Night Pick. Coach, what do you think about that pick? Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. happening. Uh, what are you smoking, sir? I'm smoking a Romeo and Julieta 1875. Um, it's a little bit bigger cigar, but it's uh, it, they're smooth. I like them. It's one of my go-tos. It, it smells. They all smell so good. Like I can't. I. I'm not going to be true, truthful with you guys. I'm not, being not, a, not being a smoker, <clears throat> I thought I was going to taste more like, I don't know, the ashtray type of... This mm. is fucking... I can't stop licking my lips. Yeah, those it's, are... This is a, remarkable. It really is remarkable. Um, really what are you smoking? I'm smoking a Rocky Patel Freedom. They're, I'm a little... With the, I'm a little, like, favorite to the Rocky Patels now because I just spent two days in Pittsburgh when I went to see the Saints game yesterday. And How'd Rock, that work out for you? Not good. No. But Rocky Patel has a uh, place down there, a cigar lounge down there called Burn by Rocky Patel. He has them all over the country. And I spent two days in there <laughs> smoking cigars and drinking whiskey and, and beer. So it's, Jesus. you want to talk about a cigar lounge? Yeah. Those are cigar lounges. Those are, well, those listen, are top notch. You think what we're doing here. So I learned some things about your cigar lounge. And uh, I want to know, so you can become a member. What does that entail? How do you, number one, how do you do it? What's the, what's the catch? And what do you get for being a for being a member? What do you, what is what is involved? In well, that? We don't have like a membership per se. What we do have is we have lockers. Mm-hmm. So if you want to get a locker, they're thirty dollars a month, and we give you ten percent off anything you you buy. Um, we also you're on our email list, and you get first shot of any events we have that we do, like the breakfast stuff that we do. And any event, you're you get first shot at those. So we don't have a membership right now. But well, um, we're thinking I, about it. I charged him a, I charged him a membership before he came in. <laughs> I see fucking guy. You say no membership. He's got me on a hook for 24 months. Oh, son of a fifty bitch. bucks a month. So. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, went up. See, I was away. Things change when you're away. I was away. Well, he probably heard you took the Saints yesterday. You had to make up some of that money. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's talk about your events. I uh, was on Facebook today, and I saw that we have a breakfast coming back. What, is, what does this mean? What are we doing? That's our, uh, we, we do it with Duraco's next door, which they're bagels. They get from Ami's, bagels and Waterbury, which are awesome. And they make great sandwiches. So 25 bucks, you get a, a sandwich from next door. You get a pick your cigar in here. We'll have uh, other stuff in here, like pastries and stuff. Um, we'll have juice, a juice bar, orange juice. We'll have Bloody Marys, mimosas, whatever you want. It's 9 to 1. It's on a uh, Sunday. I think it's the 11th. The 11th. The yeah. 11th. Because we're going to be away the week before. We wanted to do it the first Sunday, but we're going to be in, actually at a cigar convention the week before. A cigar convention? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, who's the guest speaker, Monica Lewinsky? Who knows? We're just going away for a few days. So. Too soon? I think that was a little too soon. Too soon? Too soon, bro. So, yeah, we're going to be in Tampa that, the prior Sunday, so we had, we're doing it on the 11th. So, so it's 25 Christ, bucks. Man. You guys are loving the retired life, huh? It's we're in bad. Tampa, we're in Pittsburgh. Try to go where it's warm as much as we can. Uh, yeah. you, messed that, you messed that up this past weekend. We're going to try and overcorrect. Well, listen, I'm coming here next Monday, too. And guess who we're going to see on that weekend? Patriots. No. Damn it. Close, though. Close. So we pulled this up, and we're... Debating, are we going to go to this? Are we not? We, it's in Tampa. Pull it up. They're playing the Saints. Monday night. Oh, oh no <laughs> way! Oh, I love it. Win-win. Are, win. are you going to become a honorary Saints fan for tonight? Hell or are you no. going to say, I'll, be, I'll be rooting for Tom Brady nah. all the time. 
so he could add to his ring collection. You miss him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. That. I'm hoping to marry him. So. Hey, <laughs> he is divorced. Yeah. There, listen, Giselle got a new boyfriend. You see that? Yeah, that? See listen, that. hopefully she does Tom already. Got a new one. Tom, she does. Tom, Tom, I'm a new available. She bounced. All the cigars right. you can smoke. <laughs> listen, <laughs> kind of money that dude makes. Yeah, know? tell me about it. <laughs> so we're in the lounge. We've got the, uh, and again, I'm going to take the pictures. These beautiful, wonderful chairs, which I would like to fall asleep in. Yeah. They've got you've got a plethora of cigars over there to choose from in your humidors, which I know nothing about. But I'm also learning if you can't make it to the lounge and you can't make it in here to watch a game, which this is beautifully set in the neighborhood. This is actually Quinn Street, right? Correct. Yes. So we're on Quinn Street in Naugatuck. It's literally set right in the middle of a neighborhood. So I got to say to all the neighborhood guys who are who are within a five mile radius of this joint, when the wife is is you know, with the kids or whatever they're doing, you're home at night and it's cold, you got to get your butts down here, sit in this comfortable chair, light a cigar, have a beer, and watch the game here. Uh, there's basketball, college basketball, NBA basketball, football, everything that you want to see here. It is literally the most comfortable place to find in town to sit and watch a game late at night to smoke a cigar. Because The TV is sick too, man. Jesus Christ. I, I'm learning that this fucking thing is, is ridiculously uh, tasty. But if you're a cigar smoker and you're a beer drinker or even a whiskey drinker or a scotch drinker, the fact that you're sitting on your own couch doing it when you could be down here and relaxing and conversating, I mean, this is, this is, what are our yeah. hours? What do, what do we? Uh, 12 to 8, Tuesday, I'm sorry, 3 to 8, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then 12 to 8 from Thursday till Sunday. We're, only, we're closed on Mondays usually. That's it. Oh, they opened just for us. Just for you. Just for you. Just for us. And speaking of which, we're down here. We're taking donations for our third annual Thanksgiving dinner uh, food drive. We have the bucket over there. So if you're watching this at home, this is the one time I'm going to give you permission. Put the phone down, get in the car, get down to, get down here to the lounge, and come have a donation and a beer and just hang out and come check this place out. Holidays are coming. People got everybody coming in from all over the country, grandpa, grandpa, uncle, uncle. All these people coming in. Instead of staying home while everybody's watching the parade and all that stuff, they should come down here. Do we do? We have gift certificates, gentlemen, right? We have gift certificates. We have a lot of uh, cigar accessories, humidors, cutters, ashtrays, you name it. Uh, so a lot of good Christmas gifts for the for the cigar smokers. Obviously, really good premium cigars that are always fresh. Um, you mentioned coming down, stopping down. One of the other things we're doing right now is we're selling tickets uh, for the Naugatuck High School football game on Thanksgiving. Uh, besides the high school, this is a location that people can come down and buy those tickets. Um, and rumor has it you'll also be open to stream the game. So if somebody doesn't like the cold weather or if it's possibly raining or something, or if they just don't want to be there and they like to sit down, smoke a cigar, and watch the game, you'll be open for the game. We will be open for the game on Thanksgiving Day. Um, so good little, good little place to come hide out, warm up, have a drink or something before you go home and have to face your family. So. <laughs> well, that's what, you know, the holidays come, all the family gets pushed under one roof. I think that, you know, the cigar smokers in the, in the family should get in a car and come over here while everybody else is watching a movie or doing the parade or fighting about politics. Come over to the lounge when we're not going to do any of that stuff and, and bring your out-of-towners over here and your, your cigar smokers. Mm-hmm. Um, if we're not at the lounge, excuse me, this is, I can't get over this. I'm not, can I tell you guys the truth? What? All day, I had been remembering that I told you guys I would smoke a cigar. I've been dreading it since yesterday, because I wasn't sure how I was gonna, it's been probably, last time I smoked a cigar was this guy in my brother's backyard, I don't know if you remember that. Uh, and it was a cigar, no fucking jokes. Um, <laughs> I can see the look in his eyes. He's like, hey, set me up. That wasn't a scar you were smoking. Yeah, yeah well, that's listen. Else, yeah. Maybe that's why it left a bad taste yeah. in your mouth. Oh, yeah. oh, well, oh. Don't worry. Check him out. Still short and stubby. Uh, I, I lost myself. I thought I was going to hate it. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought it was going to be something that I wasn't going to like. But this is, this is, I'm telling you, the word to use is remarkable. It well, really is. That's one of the things about um, coming to a cigar lounge and being able to... Uh, have a, a little bit of help in trying to select what it is that you want to smoke. Um, it's overwhelming when you walk into a cigar, in, in any cigar uh, place. It's very difficult to make a decision. And where you're going to spend 
10, 15, 20 dollars or more on something to smoke, you don't want to mess that up. Um, so again, when, when you come in, you'll have somebody that can kind of guide you and help you to what is going to work for you. <clears throat> so uncles and aunt, uncles and brothers, and you know, I keep saying men because men are mainly cigar smokers. Women are too. I know a couple of them. But you got somebody from out of town and they're coming in for Thanksgiving and uh, somebody wants to know what pairs well with the turkey and a white wine. It's going to be something different than pairs with the turkey and a red wine, right? I mean, there's ways to pair things so that everything kind of gels together or am I wrong? No, that's absolutely. We just did a, uh, an event a couple weeks ago. It was called Sips and Sticks. We paired them with whiskeys down at Jesse Camille's. We had uh, cigars and different kinds of whiskeys and we had them paired with cigar. We had three cigars that night and uh, we did a pairing with them and it was it was pretty good. It was really good. The food was awesome and you know, we had a pretty good turnout. It was a little chilly but we were trying to get it in before before the cold weather hit us. But uh, yeah, we, we'll do stuff like that, events like that and we're, tr- we're trying to learn more every day. You know, I don't know everything. Somebody will come in and will know more than me or more than Chuck but we're trying to learn more every day about cigar smoking. That's why we're going to this convention to see what, you know, what do they have out there? What's, what's Where's the on? convention? Tampa. Oh, Tampa. that's right. We said that right. What, what happens at a cigar convention? We don't know yet. Don't know. We're going to find out. We will report back. Maybe you should <laughs> Are you going to keep it secret? Maybe you should take the show on the road one more time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I can't leave the state till 2026. It's possible. What are you smoking? Fat Bottom Betty. Fat Bottom Betty. Nothing well, ever changes. It's probably one of the most popular cigars in Why? the country right now. It's a combination of the, the taste and just the... Uh, sweet. Yeah, it's, just, it's got a little smooth. sweetness to it. Very, it's similar it's to very what you've smooth. got, a little yeah. bit different. It's very smooth. It's, it's our bus seller, but it doubles everything else. Really? Yeah, we can't keep them on the shelves. And uh, even through our distributors, I, I can't get certain sizes. They're sold out right Jesus. now. So, yeah, it's, but it's, a, I like, I like them once in a while. I don't like the flavored stuff, but once in a while I'll have one and it's, they're, they're, they are pretty good. They're really good cigars. And you bring up a good point about it being cold the last place you were at. If you, if you live in the Naugatuck Valley, and I'm looking at the people watching this, if you're a cigar smoker and you don't want to sit outside, I don't know how long it takes to smoke an average cigar, but, you know, people, I mean, how you not want to come here to the bar, to the lounge, and sit in these comfortable chairs and enjoy the cigar is beyond me. I might start taking up cigars. I might have to come over here. <laughs> That's what we hope for. Is, you, know? you know, get them in, get them in one time, and we don't have to sell this once you once you walk in here. I think we talked about this the last time. Uh, it's this place sells itself. I mean, the minute you walk in, the pictures don't do it justice, but. Um, certainly the minute you walk in here it's very comfortable in here it's it's a great setting it's a great atmosphere to, to just relax and it's like enjoy your, a cigar. it's like your two gay uncles made a redid their basement and they made it to this cool ass like it's it's just so comfortable and it's it's you know and you walk down the stairs and you're just like into this redone basement you know that it's just a beautiful comfortable place it really is though these chairs I don't know where you got them you guys looking at me? What's the matter? You all right? Well, you have to, okay, we could have been your cousins. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. we could have well, been your cousins. I don't know if you know anything about the English language. We were drunk that one time. Happy. We I don't drunk. know what you. That <laughs> one time we got drunk. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's the tenth gay reference. And the, why did you? And, hear the, about one, that? and the one time you smoked a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> that one was much paler than this one. <laughs> Shorter, but paler. Much different this time, right? <laughs> ah, oh my goodness! So we have the beautiful lounge. And again, it really is the most comfortable uh, atmosphere. I, I, I can't stop saying it. People should say it. I'm probably at home saying, John, stop saying, repeating yourself, but it, I can't. It's like your man cave. It really, it's an yeah, absolute it's, wonderful man cave. The pictures are, that picture of the woman smoking a cigar is probably one of the coolest pictures I've seen in a long time, and I'm going to post yeah. that later. Um, but we also get into, we're mobile, gentlemen. We will, if they can't come to you, you will go to them. We do stack parties, weddings, private parties. Explain yeah, we, to me a little bit about that. So we um, we kind of got into that uh, by accident, I guess. I don't know. We were talking about different things that we could try to do. And the, the uh, pop-up cigar lounge is one of the ideas that we had. And it worked really well. We had uh, already committed to doing some 
golf tournaments, and uh, we did some other events like uh, the Duck Day down in Naugatuck. That was another one early on that we did. A um, couple car shows, did some weddings, uh, bachelor parties, you name it. It's uh, they they all were really good. And the thing we found is every time we would do an event, we wind up picking up another event or two or three every time we went out. So we wound up getting a trailer. It's all wrapped. Um, it's uh, It's got our humidors on the, on the sides. It actually looks like you're selling cigars directly. We've actually had people go up yeah. and try and pull the doors open on the trailer. Uh, and then we have a picture of the lounge on the back. So it's a, it's a great thing for us to be able to kind of expand outside the lounge. Because when we go, we put out Adirondack chairs. We put out a portable coffee table. We have a tent. So it's comfortable. So if you're at like a golf course and it's backed up, you can sit in the Adirondack chairs and smoke a cigar while you're waiting to tee off. And so people love that. And I've, I, like he said, we did car shows. People love it. They just like to sit there, chill out for a few minutes, have a cigar, and then they go on their way. But yeah, the Adirondack chairs really took off for us and people enjoy that. And then you think about how many times you've been to a wedding or a stag party and everybody's like, nobody brought, brought cigars? Yeah. I mean, you guys are perfect to say, hey, Park out in the parking lot <clears throat> and, and be ready for us when we meet you, or even inside, because obviously places don't let you smoke inside anymore. But I'm telling you, I've been to a thousand uh, uh, stag. I just I had my stag party this year, and um, one guy brought three cigars. And we're, we're all looking at him like, what mm, the fuck? Yeah. So, you know, for guys who like to, especially golf, guys Stone, golf you couldn't course, bring up any more than three? <laughs> I wasn't naming names. <laughs> it wasn't about cigars, it was, it was like a knife fight in that place. Brought like 15, I don't know, 20 knives. It was, Listen, a, hot item. it was a weird night. For some it was reason, a weird night. <clears throat> every gift that we raffled had a knife associated with it. Like, here's some, uh, here's a bucket and a sponge and some car wash stuff with a knife. Here's a gift certificate to your cleaners with a knife. I don't know why, but weird. you'd have to ask my groomsmen why. But every fucking thing had a knife. And I grew up in the valley. There's kids from Seymour High School in that joint. You do not give these fucking lunatics <laughs> knives. And um, I think one of them ended up in jail that night, but we won't talk about that. Yeah. So if you're the subway who got stuck up by a knife from my <laughs> stag party, I apologize. What it, so the lounge, it's, you can get a locker, you can come visit the neighborhood, but if you wanted to, and you wanted to have a private party, a small stag party, a card party, or whatever, and you just want to get a group of friends together, the lounge is available to be rented, for lack of yeah. a better term? We actually just did one last week, and when you brought up the Bristol officers... Um, sorry, I'm getting shit all over the table. Yeah, it's right. your it's, slot. You think slot. Stone would get up and get Amy, me a beer? But. Amy, I'm sorry, Amy. He's a slot. Um, she knows. You need a refill? Please. Thank you, sir. You handsome bastard. I'll have a yingling, too. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> Put him on a clock. A couple Saturdays ago, my, my son actually went to the, graduated the academy with the sergeant, DeMonte. Oh, no. So okay. they had their academy reunion here. They had like 20 guys and girls from that academy class. And they did it here. We got That's food. Awesome. We got food and that stuff, and uh, we had it here. They were here for a good three, four hours. It was nice. So, uh, but yeah, we we do. Look at this guy. That's why he was the employee of the month. Look at him. Well, he, he also not the missing. month he was missing. No, though, right? it was not the month he was missing. Month. Not that month he was he was missing. So yeah, we'll do stuff like that. If like you said, if you want to have a little stag, you know, we're not that big, so you put 20, 25 people, it's fine. The ventilation is really good in here so once we get everything going it's not like really smoky and overbearing in here at it's all not. Um, yeah, I, crazy. it's not it's ridiculous don't even, I don't even have one there's one that's not going up in the ceiling mm -hmm. it goes up we don't put that on hardly ever unless there's a lot of people in here but it's not overbearing at all we, we know where the switch is for that I was just going to say it reminds me of the funny story yes, you told us yes. about we found uh, the Tony switch. right yeah, Tony, Tony found the switch Tony found the switch oh, that's fucking funny I actually saw him after that he's like yeah there's those fucking guys <laughs> <laughs> but he loves you guys, and he loves this place. Um, again, the, like you said, the guys who know about the place love the place. Yeah, um, it's hard to get the uh, it's it's hard to get the word out. It's um, are you guys still being you know shadow banned because it's a tobacco type thing? Yeah, Facebook can't. thinks they're the fucking uh, Jesus Lord of everything. Yeah, there's no there's no way to get around that. It's, it deals with tobacco, so that's another obstacle you got to deal with. 
So, um, Isn't it funny we live in a world where you can market candy with marijuana to kids, right. but you can't market cigars to grown well, men? You can't, and you can't smoke a cigar and sell alcohol either. So it's, it's a wonderful state of Connecticut. So it is what it is. And we we're, we're not going to talk about no. election night, right? No. No. I don't no. Even no. no. <clears throat> we're not. We're not. And of course, it's not over. So you know, why wouldn't we still be counting votes a week later? So. I remember, and I don't want to, we won't get political tonight, but I remember growing up and knowing who won the night that night. Remember? Yeah, that's crazy. Just isn't stay it? up, you find out who won. Tomorrow's a week, and they're saying it's going to be, and some person was on the TV saying, listen, by right, we have we have 14 days before we have. What? So, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. You know what they're doing? Look over here. Do not look over here. You, ever, you know the Wizard of Oz? Don't look behind the curtain. I don't. <laughs> honestly, I don't think I even want to know. I, I, I just, I don't want to know. But we don't want to get into all that nonsense anyway. So anyway, I don't know if you guys heard, but I'm doing my third annual Thanksgiving uh, fundraiser. And over the last two years, we fed over 100 families a proper Thanksgiving dinner. So we're in our home stretch, and I want the people who are watching to know this. We're in our home stretch. We're about a week away before we got to go get everything, and we've got to uh, get those dinners out. So if you're thinking about making a uh, donation to the fundraiser, stop here tonight. Or you can hit us up on our Venmos and all of our posts that we put up on Facebook. Um, we appreciate your help, and we appreciate your donations if you can make them. So, thank you. I can't get over it. I can't stop licking my lips, man. I thought you were going to say something else. What? Go so, ahead. Uh, Why is that? Uh, <laughs> I only know I only met these guys a couple of times, but I feel like we're just going to break each other's balls and be the best yeah. of friends. But as you said before, we were talking, and you knew my dad. Your dad owned, and I can't John J. Sullivan. I know. Yeah, I always want to say raps. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's how old I am. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Your father was the kindest, coolest gentleman. Every time we saw him, I was with the same group of friends and uh, guys I went to high school with and a couple of them who knew your father better than I did. But I was with those guys. Always Number, number one, he was the chef, right? Yeah, he cooked. He yeah. cooked really good. And number two... Never left us. He always bought, not just one round, always would buy two rounds. Shots, beers, whatever we wanted. And um, old place down, uh, Vinny's in Seymour, I remember having, after a softball game, he was down there. We had like a marathon pitcher of beer night. But uh, your father was a cool, cool dude, man. And yeah, that restaurant you. he owned was, was top notch, man. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, he's... Was he a cigar smoker as well? No, no, not at all. He never smoked cigarettes or cigars. Well, because he was a fit dude. He always yeah, looked like he, he always was, worked out. He, he, was like, he was like this guy Joe over here. Joe's 62. Joe, you're 62? Goes to the gym every day. Look at him. Yeah, I work out every day. Joe, I want to be 46 in April. You look 10 years younger than me. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. I didn't work out today. I'm on vacation. Too. I had a very stressful day. <laughs> well, this, this, this yeah, I'm going to be Right when I woke up, I spent $700. What was her name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. Her name was Lola. I just got off the phone with her. I spent 25000 on engagement. Wow. Yeah, that's a good deal. And, well. and, um, uh, and the company's giving me a hard time. They, want an, they said, because now she changed her mind. She doesn't want the diamond down. She wants it up. And they're like, oh, well, we need another 6000 I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> you just, we, just pay, we just paid it. And you're supposed to fix it. And we got all the OKs and everything. So they're just taking us around. Jeez. Well, you had the wedding ring. Now get ready for the suffering. Yeah. <laughs> That's that. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. All by yourself. No, I'm happily married. I love I my wife. I saw the cue card go up over there. You're still you're newly married. That don't come with wedding we, uh, I'm waiting for the, the, the applause <laughs> sign to go up. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, Kurt? Where's the applause sign? I need the rim shot sound effect. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you say rim job? Yeah. Here you can see another gauge. It's strange, bro. Well, I enjoy the end of this cigar, gentlemen. What do we want to talk about? Tell me something about the lounge we haven't brought up yet. Actually, let me ask you a question. There's so many cigars in there. When I first walked in and I and I looked, there's if when a guy I mean what makes a guy pick what cigar? Does it matter is it because what he's drinking? The mood he's in? The longevity of it? The shortness of it? What's what do we? Yes, I think it's yeah, it's all of them. I'm um, learning a lot. See, I'm yeah, smart. people come in. Sometimes people come in. They they'll ask you, hey, I want something mild. 
you know, something not too strong, and I'll, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll guide them. Well, what do you smoke? Do you like sweet? Do you like this? Some people don't want sweet at all. Like, they don't want a fat bottom Betty. They just want a, a regular smoke like I'm, I'm having or, or Chuck's having. So, yeah, we, we guide them to there. Some I'm like, a fucking slob. You are a slob. Some like the, uh, the Maduro, which means dark, which they, they want the heavier cigars, uh, the heavier cigar smoke. So, yeah, we, we, and some people want a Churchill, which is longer, and it'll be a couple I, hours. I don't want to Listen, he's not allowed to use the fucking bathroom. Don't let him in that oh, fucking I got good aim. Holy shit. Dude, Look, he just dumped his Jesus ashes on the fucking table. <laughs> Dude, I got if this you thing. Got, listen, you, you got to go out. If you got to piss or anything, you got to go outside. Go outside. outside. First of all, joke's on both of you. I pissed my pants <laughs> 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the first person to do it in that yeah. chair. Here's another thing. Beers make me go number two. Get in close. <laughs> what haven't we talked about yet? <laughs> See, we went the whole night. And you thought I wasn't going to make a poopy joke, but here I am. Also. Poopy joke. Check. Kid Rock's on the wall. Did you see Kid Rock on the I'm wall? I'm sure that's Kid Rock. Are you guys Kid Rock fans? That's Kid Rock. That's Kid, that's Rock. Kid Rock. That's definitely Kid Rock. Ah, you don't fucking know. Let me go by without that mention. Listen. Great. You love Kid Rock. I do. Too. You guys like, do you like Kid Rock, his music? Or you? I do. Um, More importantly, I know you, you stand with his views. I know this. Yes. Yeah. His views don't suck. <laughs> it was more, we just wanted celebs. Is that you alluding to his music suck? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it from the British Cigar Shop. I'll be opening up my own cigar shop a week from tonight. No. We just wanted like celebs on the wall smoking. So my wife found all these pictures and she had them printed out and put them up. Is that so, the said Jackie Gleason one that we were looking for yes, the last time yes. we spoke? Who, yeah. How'd you, how'd you so, end up getting it? Um, what's, I, he's going to kill me. I can't, I can't remember his name. I wasn't here that night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, sorry. I forgot your name. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually down, uh, what night did you get back? What was that, last Tuesday? Yeah, he was there. Yeah, he was down last Tuesday. Guys, and he, you guys got fucking airline miles? And we told him we would give him a free cigar if he could find it, because we just couldn't find a, a picture of Jackie Gleason smoking a cigar. He always had a cigarette. Yeah, and yeah, he I found mean. it. So he wound up with a nice, a very nice cigar. Yeah, so what is, glad you brought that up. Um, what is the cigar co- like the cigar I'm smoking yeah. average cost stubby little guy Dude. tastes fucking ridiculous man. You're, you're gonna spend anywhere from 10 to 15 dollars I'd say is average for, for most of the cigars that we have here um, they're up as high as we have some for 30 35 dollars um, but you can find you know you don't have to break the bank to come down one, one thing is for sure I mean our prices are Maybe slightly higher than you would get at a uh, you know convenience store or somewhere else, but you know if you're looking for quality, that's that's what we sell here. It's it's not so much the the value. You know if you're a value shopper, maybe this isn't the best place for you to go. Um, it's not gonna again, it's not gonna break the bank, but if you want a guaranteed good cigar, it's not gonna crack on you. It's not gonna peel. It's it's gonna be humidified the right way, and it's gonna smoke the way a cigar should smoke. You know, this is this, and and we are not the only one. There's there's other area cigar shops around that are you know we're very friendly with, and you know go su- go support all the local shops. Don't don't buy online if you don't have to. Online's great; you'll get a good value from that. But if they're not stored the right way, and, and you gotta, you know, don't you, you want to touch it to make problems. sure it's not gonna? One thing I do know about cigars is. is you know, a one time a buddy showed up at my brother's house and he's actually, that was the night you saved the day with the good cigars from here. Uh, the kid's like, I got cigars, I've had them. He had them in the back of his car. He opens them up. They just crumpled. Yeah, yeah crumpled that's, not, that's right not the way you want to store cigars. We sure. take care of these human orders like crazy. Every morning I come in and I'm checking the levels and making sure they're good. You know, and it's a lot of work. It's, 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 it's not it's, easy to maintain the humidors. Well, isn't that why you don't want to buy them online? Because you don't know. Well, it's, I don't want to. Can't be wanna, Joe Schmo. I don't. Yeah, Idaho. I mean, it could be. I mean, the major distributors. Listen, they get great. They get uh, a great value because they're selling in quantity, and for the most part, you know, your major retailers they're probably storing them the right way. But you know, everybody's got to get them shipped. But I've I've bought online for years, and a lot of times you would get some bad ones. You know, it's not it's not uncommon. But you, the biggest, I'd say the bigger problem is, is how do you store them? If somebody buys a box of cigars, how are you storing those? Are you putting those in your personal humidor and are you keeping that up 
the way you should. You know, I, I can tell you before we had this place, I thought I always kept my human order the right way, and turns out I was making mistakes with that. So it's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot of learning. With the lockers, they're, they're humidified, so I can take care of those. There's a humidifier on the bottom of each, so I take care of those Jeez. and make sure this way people, you know, they want to keep their cigars in there. They're going to stay fresh because I keep the humidor going, make sure to make sure it's all set um, all the time. So. We actually just got a, a new bank of those, so we, we ordered those um, pretty much right after we opened, and we were able to get one delivered right away. The other one, we didn't get to what, July? It was late so July, almost August. Months, yeah. So we have a, a full bank. We have do have a couple of them that are rented, but we do have plenty of lockers for rent. So um, we're looking to try and push some of those for Christmas. It's a great, another great Christmas gift. And um, I would, I would tell anybody that's watching this, keep an eye on our website. We have a, uh, you know, our Facebook page and our website has all the information on everything that we sell, everything that we offer for services, whether it's the lounge being rented or our mobile cigar services um all that there's a, a little video tour of the entire place i i did that on my own i'm sure you've watched that right probably six seven eight times alone i would think yeah right alone. <laughs> alone. dark so, the house is dark dimly lit so, 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 oh, we so do, i'm not we the do, only one yeah <laughs> <laughs> go ahead <laughs> So that's all. That's on our web on our uh, web page, and you can find uh, anything at all that has to do with with all the services that we have on here. I, you know, with the with the toughness of you know being able to market and promote the tobacco industry, and you know the way that these social media is treated and all that stuff. How hard is it to get the word across? Because I got to tell you, I I'm a firm believer, and I, and I believe this. Once people walk into this place, I mean, the one thing I knew today is the first time I was here, and I, I came to meet you. And unfortunately, you guys weren't here, but just to be in here, just the once you're in here, and I have to imagine if you're a cigar smoker, you get even a bigger heart on over it because it's got everything you want as a cigar smoker. Yeah. People come in and they're once they get into the lounge, they're hooked. They love it. I get people from out of state, yeah, and I'm like, how did you ha- how'd you hear about us? And like, oh, Google, you know, a guy was down at a restaurant down the street, and he's like, yeah, I googled it, and he came in, and he wanted, he's like, I'm coming here tomorrow too. And, and they'll come for a few days before they got to fly back wherever because they, they just like it. It's nice. It's comfortable. It's like your man cave away from home. Yeah. And for the people who are paying attention at home, a good way for a business like this to get that sort of traction with that, that type of interaction is if you – Google uh, reviews help. Yep. I don't know if Yelp – I don't know if yep. you guys are on Yelp. Yep. Yep. But those people really look at that stuff, especially like you said. They're traveling. They want a cigar. They're going to come to the shop that's got the 4.5 or the 5 star. So – if you can help these gentlemen that way, get on Google and listen. Between us and nobody else listening, just fucking do it anyway if you've never been here. These are two good guys. Get on there. Give them five stars and tell the people what a wonderful place it is. And I have, to, I really do have to imagine that once we can get people to walk through that front door and sit the way that these two are sitting over there, getting each other's phone numbers, it looks like they're going to spend a <laughs> night together. But, uh, which is fine. Love who you want to love. Um, I got to imagine once they're in here, it's, it's... It's, it's a great place to be. I mean, yeah. we, we sat at the bar. Um, everything I needed was here for me tonight. Uh, there's a plethora of cigars. Um, these guys over here, um, what's that gentleman's name again? Joe. Joe, what are you smoking? Uh, it's a Romeo and Juliet. Uh, it's a Romeo and Juliet 1875. It has like an almond taste, a little bit of walnut, and some coffee. But when it gets to the end, it's a little peppery, but it's a good cigar. It's very mild, very smooth smoke. It burns perfect. Great cigar. And you would agree this is a five-star lounge. I mean, this is a phenomenal oh, place. That's why I come here. Joe's been coming here the last month or two. Week. Yeah, he loves it now, yeah. And you're a for real cigar smoker, so I you... I know all about it. I grew up with them. My grandfather smoked them. Uh, my favorite one is the Columbia COA. I love that the best. It's a really good taste. Uh, but since I've been here... Been introduced to other cigars that are really good. And as a legit cigar smoker, I'm sure you would highly recommend. This is a top-notch, oh, first-class yeah, joint. Definitely. I mean, definitely. I just tried the Charter Oak the other night. That's it's in comparison with this. It's a little bit more mild, there, but it's a good cigar. Who's your favorite all-time cigar smoker? Famous? Uh, I would probably say Clint Eastwood. Good choice. <laughs> what about you, sir? Tony? Uh, 
It's got to be Tony, right? It's just fucking, he's a badass motherfucker, that's why. Am I allowed to swear here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Do fuck. Um, yeah, I just, again, and I asked you, you know, you said the Google thing, but to, for the people, just to get them to walk through the door. I mean, do you get a lot of neighborhood crowds, or do we got to go knock the door? We do. Door we do. We get a, um, the neighborhood here is great. The people in the neighborhood. Yeah, I can't believe what a fucking. I'm a fucking slob. Man. Holy fuck. Can just, the people see I that? Just, on I want to. I want to fucking clean like, this is up. That on, is I'm, that on I'm camera? To fucking I'm clean this up. So, Jesus it's all right. We'll get it. We'll get it after. We'll shake you out outside. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the people in the neighborhood have been phenomenal. I mean, it's uh, it's it's nice to sit. We have a, a table outside that we'll have set up. Um, we've done several events here. We'll have additional tables out there, but just to sit out there and talk to the people in the neighborhood, it's it's a nice setting. It's you know, it's not like we're down on Church Street where you have a lot of pedestrian traffic coming by, but there's a fair amount because there's the, the people in this neighborhood are phenomenal. So that's good. We actually have a funny story about Yelp and uh, or I don't know if it was Yelp or Google, but um, we're down the shop and get a guy that walks in. And the guy's with his buddy, and he's just like, I, I've been struck by God. This is this is unbelievable. He goes, you guys are a cigar shop. And he walks around, and he's like, <laughs> oh, my God, I can't believe it. Well, it turns out the guy does uh, work on the side, and he was going up to one of the houses up in the neighborhood here to install a screen door. It was about 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. Well, him and his friend are coming down Route 8. The guy was talking about a cigar. They had both gone out of the country, and he had the cigar, and he's waiting to smoke it, he had it, and he decides he's gonna light it up, and he's smoking, he puts the window down, and the cigar went out the window. <laughs> and he was pissed. The guy's like, I, he goes, I, I got this freaking 20 something dollar cigar <laughs> that I've been dying to smoke, and it went out the window, and I've been doing nothing but almost crying, bitching, and moaning all the way over here. And we go to the store, and we drive by, and I see cigar shop. And he's like, oh my. So he came right in, and the guy was the happiest guy in the face of the earth because. He never expected to see a cigar shop. And everything yeah, happens in the neighborhood. neighborhood. In the neighborhood, yeah. yeah so yeah, that's like you said, it's a tough thing is we're not down like in the main street. We're in the neighborhood, so it's hard to find. We don't get a lot of the traffic that we, you know they would downtown. But but it's also part of the allure yeah. here is is that it is it kind of tucked out of the way, and uh, you know obviously the parking is very easy up here. You can you can come in. Uh, if you don't want anybody to know where you are, it's, it makes it even better. So, <laughs> well, you know. I mean, that's. So. I could I could see getting here on a Sunday to watch the football games, want to you know have a few beers and a cigar, and nobody would ever. Nobody it's ever. Actually, find it's here. actually a big part of the design, I and mean, this is all Paul's. Paul had this when we first walked into this. This was literally four walls, um, not painted. There was nothing on the floors. It was plywood. He had this kind of already all, all mapped out in his head, and one of the things he definitely wanted was he wanted that separation between the retail area and the lounge um, so that people could relax back here, and it's it's really part of the the genius of this, of is gonna, this lounge. Well, I wouldn't call him a genius, but... What, uh, well, I didn't call him... <laughs> Listen very carefully to, to the words I said. It was part of the genius of the design. To be honest with you, one of the cool parts, it almost felt like when you... The first, the first day I was here... Um, it was the young gentleman working the counter. I say young, he's probably like 30, but he's young to me. Um, it was like, come in, and he had the door here like like half shut. He was almost walking His in. His pants were up, right? Uh, afterwards, after I left, yeah. Right. Uh, I felt like, no joke, like I was walking into like a private, you know what I mean? It, yeah. it, it had that cool like vibe. You, you bring up Tony Sopano. Remember, you used to walk through the meat store and then you walk into the back. That's that's literally how it felt when I, I you know, go through Satriels, I end up in the back with the boys. Uh, that's literally how it felt. But one thing I am noticing while we're sitting here, other than the cigar you're smoking right now next to me, the fresh air and the air, I could feel it. And it's not, you know, people might be like, oh, you got six dudes smoking cigars. It's really not that way at all. And not I can feel the breeze yeah. of it leaving here so and it's not overbearing you're not smoking a cigar right I mean, you no and she's the worst at being like sensitive to smoke be nice stuff. that's your wife no, no she'll admit, she's, fine <laughs> she's the worst yeah, no, she's <laughs> yeah. next she's time i ask you to, next time you go to describe your wife don't start the sentence with you know she's the worst that's not really how you want to do that i'm saying if she's comfortable 
that's your conscience. Being and a top notch husband as I am, I know <coughs> right, right. that, you know, and we're, you know, we're still up. What'd you call me? New yeah, after years. Three months How long have you been three. married? Me? Yeah. 32 years. Oh, you fucking, you never, you never <laughs> asked that fucking Put him on the spot. Put <laughs> me on the fucking spot. Now I got to do Chris quick, my, the two things I hate, I got to <laughs> use my memory and do fucking and math. math now. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> that is a 99, 2022. Now I'm going to get charged. 20, 20, go ahead. I think that's 23 years. 23 years. It's going to be 22 or 23. Fantastic. And when we're not at the cigar lounge and we're doing the other things that we love, I know you're a softball coach, right? Yes, sir. And I don't know what you do for fun. But what are you guys doing when you're away from the cigar lounge? You're both retired uh, law enforcement. What do we do when we're not at the cigar lounge? Direct traffic. We still both yeah. work for Nogatuck doing the traffic. That's it. We don't, they ask, because they're so busy with road jobs, they ask the retirees to come back. So they had a program. Oh. Oh. So we do that um, when we can. And like I said he coaches softball. Um, I've been running around like I just came back from Pittsburgh tomorrow I'm going to Virginia for my aunt. I have a sick aunt she passed oh, away last I was ready to break his balls thanks for clearing yeah. that up man. Yeah. she passed away I was about so fast I was about to so fast yeah, not so fast Jeez. so I have to go down for the funeral tomorrow <laughs> oh I'm sorry so, um, so we got it I'm going right back out yeah right cheers. down there so. cheers thank you that. sorry about that thank you God, um, I was literally about to say something. Yeah, well, you held off. That was good of you. Yeah, so well, we keep busy. The one time keep busy. Yeah. I thought before I spoke. But it doesn't happen often. We're constantly busy. You know, he's always running around, I'm running around. So, Jason the Grand. I got grandkids. Yeah, I got three grandkids. Young guy like you got grandkids? I got three. What? Your grandson plays at Foley. Your grandson plays at Foley? Joe. Your team. Joe You're Healy. Not. Oh, that kid's a player, man. Joe. Yeah. That kid is a player. No joke. I put my name in for manager. Yeah. I just, I know who he is. That kid's a player. He's an absolute player. Well, we can work out a trade here. So after well, the show, we'll have to talk. I'm his agent. I just became that tonight. So. Well, I get a free, well, he already charged me 50 bucks a month for my locker. In the <laughs> yeah. My granddaughter <laughs> plays soccer. She was a starting goalkeeper, but she just had surgery. Are you guys Naugatuck guys born and bred or not? Did we go through this last time? Yeah. Well, I lived in Ansonia for, oh, I'm sorry. until I was like 10. Yeah. And then we moved yeah, up here. We, we're, the, we're the reverse, because I lived in Naugatuck. I lived up on Debbie Lane until I was about 10, and then I moved to Watertown. Watertown. So that's where this guy lives. So, big Naugatuck and Sony game. Who are we picking? Well, Naugatuck, but I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the quarterbacks, eh, I don't know. Oh. I'm not saying it. No, and Sony is tough every year. I mean, they're just yeah. – I'd like to see Naugatuck win. I mean, believe me. I want to see Blake throw the nine touchdowns. He's gonna. They're gonna. They're gonna pull it out, and I'm gonna see it all from the comfort of Bridge Cigar Shop. They're undefeated, right, Antonio? Yeah. Yeah, they were undefeated last year too, but we won the NBL. There you go. I don't know why they just don't put the name on a jersey over there in New Haven, anyway. But we'll talk about that later. Exactly. Um, yeah. They breed them down there. You know, they're just football so come, players. Come thanks. Now he's gonna pull it out. Come That's Thanksgiving morning, after kegs and eggs, everybody's gonna make their way over to the uh, game. And if it's raining or cold or whatever, you guys, we're going to be open. We're going to stream it. I got to tell you, this is going to be a great place to watch the game. Amy, you hear me? This is a great place to watch the game. <laughs> I hate standing outside in the cold. <laughs> Last year, we what was it? So it had to be 70 degrees for that game. It was unbelievable. And yeah, you never know. Get, I mean, last that's what we had last Monday, right? A week a week ago today. Golfing Thursday. Yeah. Must be nice, golfing on Thursday. Some of us were working. Road jobs. He's a package handler. Yeah, he's a package handler. He handles packages for everybody. Right. Speaking of Thanksgiving. Where's uh, Brown every day? On behalf of me and uh, Chuck, we want to ah, give that uh, to you. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 50 man. of that is from his uh, membership, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shit, 50 of that's going to be for my cleanup after we're fucking done over here. The maid don't show up till Thursday. She's got to make a fucking special trip tomorrow. I want to talk about the cigar I smoke because I, gotta, I want people... I am tasting a great, like, uh, like I just drank the sweetest, tastiest cappuccino. I don't taste smoke at all. Right. It's, I, I'm pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. And I think that's one of the things that uh, I like to get over on people is, one, the smoke eaters, if, if that's what you guys call them. That's what I used to call them. So the smoke eaters, the taste of the cigars, and just the overall ambiance, for a better word. I mean, this is a super comfortable nice place to be and I, I the cigar I smoked just like I said it just like I had a cappuccino and it's we actually didn't have those at first and Stoner 
brought it up to us. He's like, hey, I want these mac- macchiato ones. They're good. I'm like, all right. So we ordered them. Was this before or after he paid for his locker? Uh, before. All right. He's all caught up. He's oh, is he? Up. He's all caught up? Yeah. Well, he showed yeah. up. No more missing. He's He's been yeah. found. But he asked for them, so we got them. Uh, Joe, like he said, he liked those CAO Columbia's. So we didn't have them, but we got them in. So if somebody comes in and they want something, I'll get, we'll get them. Just going to ask. So if a guy walks in and he says, I smoke the boopity boppities and you don't have them, we'll get them. You're going, yeah. Yeah, we'll get them. You know, because we don't have a big walk in. You know, we have the four humidors here, the stand ups, and we're getting another one, a counter one that should be here next week. Um, so we're going to have a little more room. But we don't have the big walk in with the big selection. So we. If there's something that somebody wants, we'll get it for you. Mm-hmm. All I got to do is ask. You say that, though, but there's hundreds of... I have of a question, John. Daddy's talking. What's going on with Cubans? Or is so, there already changing them? So here's, here's, here's the long and short of Cubans. Cubans are... Uh, Cubans kind of adapted to the situation that they're in. So what, what you see a lot of is that a lot of the Cuban manufacturers figured out that they can sell in the United States if they could just move outside of Cuba. So... You know, the reason why a Cuban cigar is so good is because they're meticulous. They don't, there's, you know, their seconds could be first for somebody out there. Right. They don't, you know, right. they're just meticulously made. Um, so the, the craftsmanship of the actual cigars, they figured out that if they manufacture them outside of there, they can, they can retain the business uh, with the United States. And I think that's, that's what a lot of them have done. Um, but they, you know, like everything else, with the cigar industry, a lot of the companies have been bought out, you know. Yeah. So it's, uh, they, they've moved on, but um, I think the craftsmanship for a lot of those cigars have not suffered from that, which is unlike some of the other, <laughs> right. some of the other things right. that have happened. Yeah, um, yeah. So I don't think you necessarily, I don't think, you know, you can go to, you can go to Canada and get a Cuban cigar. There's a lot of different islands and places you can go and get a Cuban cigar. I've had Cuban cigars and, Honestly, I, I mean, I guess people pre-embargo that used to smoke them a lot, they could probably tell the difference between a cigar that was made in Cuba yeah, and right. a cigar that was made outside of Cuba. But honestly, it, a good cigar is a good cigar. Yep. And um, that was one of the things when we opened this up, and I think we talked about this a little bit the last time uh, we were on your show, was that trying to figure out what we we're going to put in here was not easy. No. Um, and we got a lot of help. Uh, Stogie's here in town. Uh, she helped us greatly. Um, Fred uh, from Watertown. Fred in Watertown uh, helped us tremendously with trying to figure out what it is we could go. And we got a good piece of advice as well from Fred was like, listen, you got to gotta adapt to your customers. You know, what I, what I have here in my shop may not work for you and you just got to see and that's why when we have customers that come in and they ask us to get something that's what we want to try and, and kind of tailor it to them well i find it hard to believe that i mean you were like you know we just we just have the four humidors or whatever i mean to me there's hundreds of cig- hundreds of cigars here i gotta believe that there's no matter who you are you're gonna find something you're gonna want to smoke here because i mean again i don't know how to there was a little sign that showed you what they are i don't know shit about shit but I have to imagine that somebody who walks through these doors is going to find exact, at least something close to what they're looking for. Yeah, it's um, if you can't. Seventeen fifty-three. Nice. I was going to say if he's got the dial, he has he struggles with that a little bit. <laughs> Digital. I don't want to light your microphone on fire. A lot of rats. A lot of rats in Connecticut. So yeah, Connecticut has like one of the best rappers in the world. Yeah. So remember when you used to go what to What does that mean? Yeah. You remember when you used to go to yeah. Bradley and you'd see all the tobacco fields? Oh, mm-hmm. right now. And then, yeah, they're gone. Yeah. yeah. One left. Yeah, that's they had that's where all the, the rappers are from, the Connecticut rappers. Uh-huh. And they're like the best in the world. Yeah. Um so a lot of people talk about Connecticut rappers, Connecticut rappers. So why, why and, and because I'm stupid about things like this, why were Cubans just because of trade? That's why they were illegal. Well, there's a whole embargo that was. I mean, I know Cuba was a bad place for a while. Yeah, yeah. Fidel I mean, Castro wasn't living his best life. But. It really. I mean, I don't think it really had a lot to do with cigars necessarily, but that's obviously a big thing that Cuba was known for is their cigars. But um, what could the real penalty be for fucking smoking a Cuban cigar? You know what I mean? But it's it is it is funny. I have an uncle who uh, 
went away one time. They had to go out of the country, and he was and he, he was asked to bring back a bunch of Cuban cigars. And uh, he thought he did, and that's <laughs> it's one of the common things. You go away, and they'll be, hey, get these Cohibas. You can get 30 Cohibas for $5. That should be a red flag for anybody. If you're buying 30 Cohibas for a low price, it's probably not. It's probably not what you think you're getting. So he thought he was bringing these cigars in, and they stopped him when he was flying, and they went through, and they found his cigars, and he came clean, and he's like, well, I, I, you know, I got the guy's like, listen, they're not Cuban. They're not Cuban. Oh, you're good. You're all set. So, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that suckers but, to the left. <laughs> so we got a special sir. line for Save you guys. Sorry. You're over there. Yeah. Or, am I in trouble? <laughs> not from me. Not maybe anymore. from your friends, but not from us. I don't know. But, I mean, I don't know. Like you said, the cigars, you can find a good cigar, uh, with, which you guys have. I don't, I don't know about Cuban cigars. I don't know. I think that was all just a, wasn't that like a, like a, just a scheme to get people to fucking buy them to say that they're better than everybody else's? Well, they could. You're I, like the second guy that I, I know. My buddy's father's a legit cigar smoker, and he once said the same thing. Because we'd all be like, oh, you know, you're young, 22 years old. Get, get some Cubans. He's like, you don't want a Cuban. What do you want a Cuban for? You get a perfectly good cigar right here in this country. Yeah, a good yeah. cigar is a good cigar. Um, I know we're we're starting to run up on the hour mark, so I just want to bring no, up one thing. When we likes um, to stay up late, talk as late when as When we put yeah, Facebook, obviously, because we're a tobacco shop, they limit us on where we can go. So I always ask uh, people that are watching this and, and why we wanted to be back with you again because why else would we want to spend time with you um why, why we, want, we want to we, we want to continue to get the word out uh we had a lot of people that did stop in after we did this with you the last time um but obviously people are welcome we want new customers to come down but we also ask you know spread the word if you know somebody that's a cigar smoker we this is a great time of year because we're starting to get into the holidays um you know spread the word out and Again, we want to see that people are supporting the local businesses uh, and the local cigar shops. Uh, Ours is part of that network in this area, and we want people to come down, enjoy this. But even our Facebook, our social media, share it. When we put something out that helps us out, you might have a a friend or an uncle or an aunt, even if it's your gay uncle. um, They may... They would be called a gunkle. Right, a gunkle, right. (laughs) Very happy, right? Absolutely. Um, they they may find out about the cigar shop and, and come down and... Well, and I say it all the time with my stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. But people don't understand. If Bridge Cigar Shop says, hey, we're doing a, a, um, a sticks and... Sips and sticks. Sips and sticks. If <coughs> Ken Stone or Kirk Malin or my buddy Joe over there, just if they like it, People don't understand the power of that. It shows up in their feed that, hey, this guy, you know, John Dodato liked this post. And then they'll see it. They don't necessarily have to be following you for them right. to see it. It literally takes no time. Just you click that like button and it helps you and it helps me. Helps everybody. Just click like. You know it's for a good cause. Number one, always support small business. Always, always, always. Forget the big box places. The you know, Bridge Cigar Shop places like I work at places like Tools Plus. It's the small business places that are hiring the people that you live around and this, that, and other thing. Those, that's where you want to be. Always su- support local business. But people don't understand how important that one like or that one share or even just a comment. Hey, Bridge Cigar Shop, we're doing our breakfast. You know, come down and get uh, the bagel sandwich. Ken likes it. And Ken's probably got, I don't know, he's a nice guy. He's probably got a, seven or nine friends on Facebook. They're all going to see that. You know what I mean? And they're going to say that just brings seven or nine other people in there that wouldn't necessarily see that post. And listen, again, even if you're not a cigar smoker, but you know somebody who is, uh, Christmas is coming. Come get a gift certificate. Let them, you know, get them a gift certificate. They'll come in. They'll get the cigar of their choice. They'll be able to smoke it here or bring it home, but they'll be able to see the top-notch lounge. And the good thing about that is the gentleman or the lady who is a cigar smoker obviously knows other cigar smokers. So they're going to spread the word. So people don't understand the power of that one like. So when this video is over, fucking like it. I mean, what more do we got to say over here? I'm going to have a Sally Struthers moment over here for 17 cents a day. You too <laughs> can keep the Bridge Cigar Shop alive yeah. Any, and me fed. Anything to pass the word out. The other thing is we use a uh, uh, POS system that's called Clover. Uh, it does two things for us. It One, it's, uh, well, three things. It, it helps us really ring out and keep charge of 
what our inventory is and be able to easily find what we have so we can not do a lot of math on the on the register so that's always a good thing uh but more importantly it'll have a uh rewards program that's built right into it so if you come in you check in the bridge cigar we know that and then you get reoccurring discounts because uh through your purchases and that's an easy thing to sign up for we have uh, that right up in our register so people can easily uh go into there the other thing it allows us is you don't even have to come down to the shop to get a gift card you can go right online go right to our uh, web page click in you can buy a gift card and it could either be right to the phone you can send it to their phone or you can get the hard the hard card and just come down and we can scan it for you but you, you don't i didn't even know that yeah it's, it's, come to work it's amazing while, isn't it <laughs> he's too busy <laughs> Right. So you're more, you're more likely to find Paul here than you are to find me. So. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in the ease of transaction, uh, people, especially nowadays, people love that easy transaction. And as we hit the 8 o'clock hour and Kirk starts, you know, just saw him chug a bottle of insurance to try to keep his energy up. It's 8 o'clock when the one chip challenge starts. <laughs> yeah, what well, happened to that? I we've got some news oh, tonight. Yeah, uh, I'm here for that. Man. I like these guys, but I want to <laughs> see you leaving the stretcher. <laughs> 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 There's a friend. <laughs> I love you. Leave it a stretcher. Uh, no, I want to enclose before I stop talking about the British Cigar Shop. You just blew smoke in my face, right? Normally, I would be like, what the fuck? It just smells so goddamn good. It really, it's I, it must have come a long way since my grandfather's Evermores, I got to tell you. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal. But between the, between the smoke system, the taste of the cigar, and the environment, if you're not coming to British Cigar Shop... You're, you're, you're making a mistake. Just stop in one time. That's all it's going to take. These guys, we, listen, we broke some stones tonight, but these guys are really um, two good guys, and they're doing a good thing right here in this neighborhood. So, you know, press like for them. Press, you know, comment on them. Do the Google review and help spread the word because in life we need businesses like this. We need something like this in our neighborhoods. It'd be a shame if something like this ever had to stop ceasing because, um, you know, of whatever. But get down here. Check this place out. It's only going to take the one time, I guarantee you. These guys are filled with personality. But they're one, two wonderful guys. I'm joking. Uh, one of these is more handsome than the other, but I'm yeah. not going to tell you which. We're just going to leave a cliffhanger on That's that. Right. Um, next week, we'll be back live in studio, and I will be eating uh, something very spicy and possibly leaving on a stretcher. So That's be tuned in. Good. Be tuned in for that. Um, I'm literally fucking afraid to do it. I'm not, I've been, Why don't you have Stone in the studio? He said he wanted to see it. Please. I'll be looking. I'll, be really I'll sit where Corbin sits in the back. Yeah, please. <laughs> he, he's laughing, but he's got the. I'll be puking all over the shit. Um, so but we'll talk about that next week, <laughs> gentlemen. I can't thank you enough, Paul Chuck. Thank you so much for having me back. It was their idea to have me in. Of course, I said yes right away. Um, if anything comes of this, I just hope that it's more traction. It's more visible for people to see, and I hope that we pick it up. And uh, I'm certainly going to be back to smoke one of those things. I'm not even joking. Like, it's literally the best cappuccino I've ever had in my life. Make and sure we have the vacuum cigar. for this fucking yeah. slot. Well, right? I was just going to... Do you guys have cigar bibs? Yeah, we is do. Is there just like a, yeah. uh, a little thing that... <laughs> is that normal? That's not normal, guys? That, to make a mess like I made? No, you make it. You make it. We'll yeah, put yeah. an ashtray. Yeah. Listen, yeah. get like around my neck, a little yeah. fucking... Boop, boop. No, it, it was really good. And I'm going to go home, kiss my wife, and she's going to say, that tastes delicious. I'll comment on that later. <laughs> Um, I do want to thank Kirk and Lisa for coming out tonight. It's not thank like you. them to leave thank their house you. and to stay up this late knowing he's got a, probably a 20-minute drive. You can see the way he looks right now. He's absolutely miserable. So, um, there's the real so, boss. Uh, we just want to thank you. Oh, we have a customer. That's my wife. That's, that's your wife? That's yeah. the, that's the Bro, you outkicked the coverage, kid. Good for you. Right? <laughs> Holy moly. Look at you. Huh? So proud of you right now. Uh, <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, but it's a great time to be here at Kirk. Lisa, really thank you. I know it's outside of Kirk's comfort zone, number one, mm -hmm. to, uh, to be here. So everybody who made a donation, guys, thank you very much for your generous donation. Um, we'll be back next week. I, I love it here. This, I'm telling you right now, last thing I'm going to say, before I say what I usually say, you have to get down here. You have to see this place. I'm going to be quiet now. I know Kirk's going like this. You can't see him. Um, the three most important words in the English language are how are you? The holidays are upon us. And other than getting them a bridge cigar shop gift certificate, you can text them and ask them how they're doing. 
You never know how those three words can change somebody's life and change their whole day around. So just do that once you're done watching this show. Be nice to each other. Bright eyes, I'm coming home. I love all of you. We'll see you next week.